Hey everybody, welcome to Cousin Jack Cars. Today, we're going to go through a step-by-step -step tutorial where I will show you how to make one of these little gingerbread Christmas ornaments, which, uh, by the way, can also be a fridge magnet. Just put a magnet in the back, you're ready to go. So you can have an ornament plus a fridge magnet, and I also use it as a bolo tie adornment with the magnet as well. And you can see there's a variety of little guys here. This one has a bite taken out of him, so he's got a little different expression, right? And these are carved from basswood, and the basswood, I'll show you some examples of what we're using today. And we're gonna start with a piece that's two inches wide, that's 51 mil millimeters wide, and three and a half inches tall, which would be 89 millimeters, and it's about a half inch thick, 12 millimeters thick, okay? Now, it, all you need is, if you have a two inch by two inch block of basswood, you can just make your mark down to the three and a half inch line and cut yourself a bunch of these blanks. Uh, it's really easy. Yeah, if you have a saw, that is, it works out pretty well. And I also want to let you know, it's time for another carving giveaway. So I'm going to be giving away um, one of these little carvings right here. And all you have to do to enter is leave a comment right below this video in the comments section. Uh, you can just say hi or whatever you would like to say. Make a comment down there. and I'll do a random drawing from the folks who have left a comment. Okay. Also appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. That's always helpful. So we're going to go through the steps and we will start with step one, where we're going to be putting in the space between these two legs. Okay, so show you what we're going to do first. We're going to start here and we're going to be removing this material. All right. And uh, let's get the measurements together. So what we're going to do with our little piece of basswood here, we're going to measure into the center of it, right? It's two inches wide. And so we're going to come into the one inch mark, which again is 25 millimeters. Looks like it's about right here. All right, so from there, we're going to measure up one inch which is right here, another 25 millimeters, and we're just gonna make a line like that. Next, we're going to come over here along the right side of our piece of wood. And we're gonna make three marks, okay? So our first mark will be at one and a quarter, which should be right about here. Then we're gonna make another mark at two inches, and finally a mark at two and a half. So we'll start from this mark that we made at one and a quarter, that's the 32 millimeter mark. We're just going to draw a line from that mark to connect it right over here. And there you go, that's that space we're going to be removing this material. Let me grab my knife, put on my glove, and we'll get rolling. Just going to make a little stop cut right here. So yeah, these are designed to be lightweight. And that's what you would want in a Christmas ornament. Same with a fridge magnet. You, know, you don't want a heavy piece of wood uh, to try and be a magnet on your fridge. So I'll just continue removing this material and uh, you can catch up with me as I get near the end. So 
So we're almost finished removing this material. And this is the foundational part of the carving, right? Where we're shaping, sort of roughing out our shape. Let's go on to step two. Okay, so next we're going to put in the space between this leg and the raised arm that he's holding up here. So this space right here, I'll show you that on this blank. That's what we're going to take out next, right? This material. So let's get our measurements together. And we already made these two marks earlier. And now what we will do is go up to this mark and measure in towards the center one half inch, which would be 12 millimeters, okay? We just make a little dot there. Well, let's go ahead and make a line. We'll just do a line there. Now, from there, we're going to measure up a quarter inch, which would be like six millimeters, okay? And make a mark just like that. Connect that right here. And then we have this other mark we made earlier on this edge. We're just going to draw a diagonal line from this point to that point. There we go. And now we'll take out this material. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut in kind of a stock cut here and one up here like that. And then kind of connect it on the back side a little bit. Just like that. Next, I'm going to just knock off the corner and this one. Okay, now we've got that shape removed. Let's go on to step three. So next what we will work on is the space between the raised arm and the head, right up here, this space. Let's look at that on our blank. What we're talking about here is really just a bit of material to get that space between the raised arm and where the head would be, and we'll remove that. Let's get the measurements for that. So for the measurements, we'll start from the right side of our piece, right over here, along the top, and we will measure in towards the center, one half inch, 12 millimeters, and then one inch, 25 millimeters. So my half inch mark, 12 millimeters here, and then my one inch mark, the 25 millimeter. From the mark that we made at one half inch, we're going to measure in towards the center, three sixteenths, about five millimeters. Right about here. And then from that mark, we'll measure down three sixteenths, so another five millimeters down from there. And we'll just make a dot. Next, we'll just draw a couple of diagonal lines from that dot to our mark over here, where we had that half inch mark, and also the mark over here, where we measured over one inch and we'll remove this material. 
All right, so we have a starting point here and one over here. Just kind of connect those from the back. Like that. Take out that corner and this corner. And we're carving through some end grain here, so it's probably a little more difficult. We should expect that that would be more difficult, right? And then be patient with it because end grain can be a challenge. You want to keep your tools sharp and make sure they're sharp before you start carving into end grain. This is not a lot of material we're removing right here. Just a little bit. Just kind of creating space. Where eventually that raised arm will touch where the head is. Okay? Yeah. All right. Just a little notch, more or less. Now we'll move on to step number four. For step four, we're going to remove some material over on this side. It's going to be from the bottom edge of this belt right on down to the bottom of the leg, okay? Which again, if we look at our blank, we're talking about the bottom edge of the belt here and then down like this, and we'll remove that material. So to get us started, we'll put in some measurements and we'll go over here onto the left side of our piece of wood. What we'll do is measure up one inch along that left side, that's 25 millimeters. And we'll just make a mark here that. Now from that point, all we're going to do is measure in about an eighth of an inch, you know, three millimeters roughly, and then make a line down to the bottom of our piece. And you can see I'm just freehanding this. It's, yeah, about an eighth of an inch from there. And we'll remove this material. Let's start with a stop cut at the top here, just like that. Carry that over onto the back. Yeah. And again, uh, we're not removing a lot of materials, just a little bit making these little ninja bread men is relatively simple. And if you have a scroll saw or a band saw and you cut out a bunch of these little guys, you can get a lot of them done very quickly. Probably be great to bring to a craft fair, or maybe if you're doing a fundraiser for your church or your school or local group. You can make, like I said, a bunch, and of course you can give them to friends and family for the holidays. So there we go. Step number four. That was pretty simple, right? Let's go ahead now and put in the top edge of our belt. So that'll be up here. For that, all we're going to do is measure from this mark that we have made here for the bottom edge of the belt, we'll just go up three eighths of an inch. Okay. And make a mark. So that's more or less where the top edge of our belt will be. 
Okay, for the next step, we're going to put in the space from the elbow to the top edge of the belt, and also from the elbow to where the shoulder will connect with the head. So we'll make this line and this line. Let's get our measurements for that. Now to start, we want to begin from the top left corner here of our piece of wood. We're going to measure down along this right side, I'm sorry, the uh, left side, and we're going to make marks at three quarter inches, one and one eighth, and one and three quarters. All right, so we'll start with three quarter inches, be right here. We'll go one and one eighth right here and one and three quarters right down here. Okay, next, what we uh, need to know is this mark that we made is where the elbow will be. And then from there, we'll just start, well, let's start at the one and one eighth mark. That's this one. We're going to measure in towards the center five sixteenths, about eight millimeters, and we'll make a mark. Right there. Okay, so now we've got that dot there. We're just going to draw some diagonal lines from where the elbow would be to that dot, like that. And then also from the mark of our elbow down to the top edge of where the belt will be, like that. And we will be removing this material and this material. So again, I'm uh, going to just start with a stop cut here, carry it over onto the back, kind of make a shallow stop cut where the elbow would be right there, not too deep. We want to leave that material and then come up here, make another stop cut where more or less the shoulder will form. So let's take out this material down here from the elbow to the upper edge of the belt. All right, so while we're at it, we can take our other mark that we made right here earlier. We can just kind of make a diagonal line over this way. You can see it's going to help us form a piece of that, uh, that edge where the head will be. We're ready to move on. Let's go to step number six. All right, for step number six, we will begin to put in the shape of this head. You can see these these heads are oblong. They're they're not symmetrical. They're not a circle, right? It's a cookie, or resembling a cookie. It's a caricature of a cookie. So the head can be oblong, egg shaped. Just uh, have some freedom with it, okay? So we'll put in this shape and uh, we'll get started with some measurements. Okay, from this left edge over here, what we will do is measure in towards the center. And make a mark at three quarter inches.
which would be about 19 millimeters. And then from that spot, we're going to measure down one and one eighth inches. So go one inch plus an eighth puts us right there, okay? Now we'll just connect those. Make a line just like that. Now, the next step from there, we will measure along that line down from the top. We'll come down a half an inch right here, right? But 12 millimeters. We'll just make a dot there. And then from there, we're going to measure out to the right and to the left, five eighths of an inch, 16 millimeters in each direction. Okay? So five eighths. So we have a spot here and one here. This is going to give us what we need to more or less draw the shape of the head. All right, so we know that the arm is connecting to the head here. So we have our line. The base of the head will be down here. We're just going to curve this around like that. The other side of the head will be here. So again, Kind of curving it around and then the top of the head like that and you want to make sure you draw your lines draw your shape a little bit larger than what it's going to be right you want to leave some extra that's more or less the shape of our head and where it is positioned. We'll go ahead and start carving in that head. Now this is, I mean, for the most part, a relief carving, right? So for this head, we're just really going to be coming in here and getting some separation. And you know, you can use a V tool if you want to start your line with a V tool, whatever you would like to do. Uh, this today is really an example of a knife only type of whittle, so I am not going to use a V tool. But I will start with a stop cut. And I'll just carry that over. Stop before you get to that edge and just rock your knife like that. There we go, we have our stop cut in place. So I'll just start, come underneath that stop cut and peel away some material. Like I said, it's more or less relief carving at this point. We're not really making a lot of depth. And we'll come over here and start shaping. Now we need to get into this end grain here to start forming the top of the head. We don't want to remove a lot of the material. We want that height, but we do want to certainly round it some and get rid of all the bandsaw marks and all that, right? I hope that you're enjoying yourself with this project. I've made a bunch of these little guys. They are kind of fun. And you know, you can give them different personalities uh, and expressions. Really just have a good time with it. All right, so we have the basic head shape in place now. And that's what we're doing here, right? We're just kind of forming the shape. 
Let's go on to step number seven. Well, for the most part, what we want to do at this part in our progress for this carving is to go around these edges and do some rounding. All right, we've got these hard edges here and we want them to look more like a cookie. We want them rounded. So the next step is to go around the perimeter and do some rounding shaping. Start to make it look more like a cookie. All right, so we're just taking off the edges like that. And we do want to remove the bandsaw marks on the surface here too. And for these limbs, of course, we want to take the bottom of these limbs and round them off. And we're going to make sure we get rid of the bandsaw marks on the end grain too while we're at it. So I think you get the idea. I'm going to continue working my way around this piece and rounding all of the shapes and removing the flat bandsaw marks that might be there. And we'll catch up after. So we have our roughed out and rounded shape here. And what we'll do next is start putting in some of these extras, right? This belt will put in his right arm and we'll start by drawing those things. Okay, so we'll start by making some pencil marks um, along the bottom edge of the belt. And this belt, um, you can see how this one is shaped. So we've got some extra material here I imagine we'll knock off about half of that right here and have the bottom edge of the belt right there and the bottom edge of the belt on this end is where this space connects with the top of the leg. So what we'll do is just pencil in a line for that bottom edge of the belt and you can see how this kind of curves, it's got a little slope to it, right? And we're going to put in this knot and these, these ends here. So he's kicking and these are flying back a little bit. There's a wrinkle here and some wrinkles around the knot as well. Let's put in that bottom edge. Start here. And we're going to end up here. And we'll just kind of give it a little bit of a curvature to it. Just a gentle curve like that. And now we're going to come up. We know that the top edge is going to be around here. And on this end, we're going to come up about a quarter of an inch, roughly six millimeters. We're just going to follow the curvature of that bottom edge. Right? Just like that. And then for the knot, and I like to put the knot over here, probably about a half inch in from where that edge of the belt will be. And then just draw a couple of dangling ends here. One that overlaps another kind of deal. Like that. Put in a knot and a few folds, like so. And put in a little fold here because he's kicking up with this leg, right? Creating this fold. And that's what we will want for that shape. Okay, let's talk about the right arm. So, from the front edge of this belt, we're going to measure in towards the center 
one half inch. Okay, that's 12 millimeters. And we'll make a mark, so it's about here. Now from that point, we'll take our ruler and sort of angle it to follow the slope of this belt here. We'll angle our line on the ruler to kind of follow that. And then we'll measure up from that mark a half inch. So we'll start here and come on up 12 millimeters or half inch and make a mark there. Now, over here from our back edge, we're going to start from the back edge of the belt and measure in. Now, again, I'm going to be removing some of this belt here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I should have done that while I was rounding, but yeah, I did not. Anyway, I'm going to measure in uh, one quarter inch, six millimeters, be about here along the top edge of that belt. And then I'm going to measure up three eighths from that spot. So here's our spot. I'll come up three eighths and make a mark right here. All right, this will give us some reference points to draw this little gingerbread man, ninja bread man's arm. So we're gonna curve the front like this and then slope down to this spot, just like that. Of course, we have the top edge of the belt here. So there we have it. We've drawn belt with the knot and the ends and we've put in the drawing marks for the right arm so now we'll carve those so i'm going to start with some stop cuts right here at the bottom edge of the belt following the pencil line stop when we get to where that knot is right because we're going to have these dangling ends follow those to make a stop cut there and one like that. Just making stop cuts to sort of outline these shapes. And rock your knife on that corner. And let's go ahead and knock off that extra material that we talked about right here. Let's keep making stop cuts so we'll Put in the top edge of the belt now, come to where that knot would be, follow along, make a stop cut, and get to the corner, rock your knife. Come over here, finish our stop cut, like that, and we'll make some stop cuts around the shape of this arm. And as we talked about, this is more or less a relief carving. Okay, now that we have these stop cuts in place, we're just going to relieve some of that material. And we have several little triangle cut opportunities that we can take advantage of. So let's start with that. We have a triangle cut here. So we're just gonna put in the tip of the knife that way and this way. Take that out, we'll create some depth. We have another one right here. Opportunity to create some depth. One right here. And we also have one right here. All right, now we'll continue 
removing material along where we made those stop cuts to help bring out the belt. Actually, before we get too far along, let's go ahead and put some stop cuts around that knot. So we're accounting for that too, right? Because the knot will be sitting a little bit higher than that surface of the belt. And we need to uh, make sure that we put that in. So let's just do that. Uh, let's go ahead and carve some material away around the knot, which will elevate the level of the knot, right? Yeah, we'll go ahead and separate this material here. Okay, now what we need to do is bring that belt down a little bit. Take some material away again. This will help us understand that the knot sits on a plane that's above where the surface of the belt will be, All right? And then we want to put in a fold in our knot like that. In this case, we're going to have the bottom piece of the knot tucked under this top piece. So I'll come down here and take out a little sliver of wood like that. Let's separate these ends. In this case, this one, this side over here is tucked under that side. So again, we'll come from this direction and make a stop cut like that. And those ends are tucked in to the bottom of the knot. Let's get rid of our bandsaw, not bandsaw, pencil marks here. And remove material away from these ends of the belt in order to bring them out, right? Elevate them a little bit. And then we'll put in this arm, yeah. There's quite a bit of cleanup um, I would normally go through here next. But in the interest of time, I want to move along and show you how to put in the face, right? The eyes and the mouth. And then I'm going to wood burn some details in here. Show you how to do that. Okay. Okay, so what we'll do next is draw in the headband here, the eyes and mouth, this little dimple, these eyebrows and such. Okay. And we have these little icing marks on each of the limbs. And we'll make sure and talk about those too. Let's start with some measurements to put in the headband and the facial features. So for the headband, headband, we're just going to measure down from the top of the head. We're going to come down half inch, roughly half an inch, and that's roughly 12 millimeters. Let's kind of make a mark here. 
And we're going to draw a line right across the head, just like this. Carry that over onto our edge here. And that will be where the headband is going to be located. That's the bottom edge of the headband. And now next what we'll do is kind of situate where the eyes will be. So I'm thinking the center here is probably roughly out there. And what I want to do is measure up from that headband, maybe 1 16th. So let's put in a center line here for just a second. So if I measure up from there about 1 16th, which is like uh, 1.5 millimeters. It's roughly like this. And also 1 16th on either side of this center line. This one looks like it's a little further away from the center line, so I'll bring it in some. I like that. And I'm just going to draw in some eyes. These eyes are not large. You could make them large if you want to. I would say they're probably an eighth of an inch in diameter. Like that. And then we're going to use the eyes as a reference point when we make that mouth. So from the headband, the bottom edge of the headband, all we're going to do is measure down one eighth of an inch. That would be three millimeters, like so, right here. And now for the mouth, what we want to do is make sure that the mouth extends to a place aligned with the outside edge of each of these eyes. And then we want to kind of draw in the tongue and a little dimple like this. I like to put in some slanty sort of angry eyebrows like that. And then I want to draw in these folds that um, carved off a little earlier. Folds right here, here, and it put a fold in at the front of the belt like that. And then when it comes to the icing on the limbs, you know, we have these sort of squiggly lines. And they're probably about a sixteenth of an inch wide. And, and I just kind of eyeball these things. I want to leave some space, of course, at the bottom here. And I like to just start with the bottom edge of the line. And I'm going to carry these over all the way to the side. And then again on this side. And from there, I'll just draw a line that follows the general curves of that bottom line. All right, so there we go. I'll go ahead and draw in these other icing marks, and then uh, we'll catch up right after that. So I've got the wood burner here all set to go. I'm using a walnut hollow wood burner, which has wire tips. This is the tip that I use most often. And for a lot of what we'll do here, I more or less use the edge of this tool. And for the heat settings, I like to use a higher heat setting 
when I'm separating major parts. By that, I mean separating the head from the body, separating you know, the arm from the body here and the belt, just outlining the major parts, okay? So I usually will crank it up to level 10 uh, for doing that part. And then I'll turn it down later when it's time to go ahead and put in more detailed pieces like the eyes and the mouth and such. I do want to separate the head from the shoulder on the side of the piece right over here. Just like that. So you do have options. I don't want to make sure and mention them. For example, if you don't have a wood burner, you can certainly paint in a lot of the detail that I will be putting in with the wood burner. Another option would be using a small permanent type of marker, like a Sharpie with an extra fine tip or some similar type of permanent marker. They make some for artists to use and you can take your pick from different ones. And if you do have a wood burner, it gives you an opportunity um, not only to add a dark line, but also to give it some depth. This wood burner, especially when it's at the highest number of uh, the heat setting, will definitely burn into the wood and create some depth. So we'll put in a fold here. Put in a couple of folds right there and there. Same thing on this side of the knot. I'm going to separate the arm from the head along this top edge. Like that. And we'll carry on with the lines around the belt. Create a line on this end too. From there, I'm going to turn the heat down to a setting that's about three quarters towards the hot side of the spectrum, right? Not, not all the way like it was. And begin putting in some of the more intricate details where I want to be able to not mess up. Now, if you do mess up, it's no big deal. Like you can see down here, these little lines you know, you can come back with a knife and remove any of these wood burning marks that you don't like. It's pretty simple to do. All right, let's go ahead and put in the headband. We'll just bring a line across for the bottom of the headband. 
like so. And carry that over onto the edge. We'll make a similar mark for the mouth. And let's go ahead and put in that little dimple. Just a little curved line. And the tongue. Some eyebrows, of course. And the shape for these eyes. Now, it can be a little bit of a challenge when you're using a wood burner to try and make rounded shapes when you've got a straight edge. You just take your time, use a light touch, and you can get there. Like I said, if you're ever feeling like you messed up something, just come back with your knife. Remove the marks and do it over. We'll put in some of the lines for the icing here. And I'm going to talk with you about the finish on here. The paint that I used to make that cookie color and the finish that I use once I've let that paint dry. I want to remind everyone I'm doing a giveaway, right? It's time for a giveaway. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned if you would like to be part of the random drawing, all you need to do is leave a comment in the comment section below this video. And what I'll do is do a random drawing. Uh, the deadline to go ahead and leave your comment there will be December 1st. 2023. So leave your comment in the comment section by December 1st of 2023, and you will be in there for uh, the random drawing. See if maybe you're going to get uh, one of these free carvings sent your way. And I will pay the shipping. No worries. Uh, wherever you may live, I'll send it to you. And then while you're at it, if you're not a subscriber yet, please do subscribe to the channel. And anytime you hit that like button, it really helps. It helps to bring the video to the attention of other carvers just like you. And I certainly appreciate that. Because the goal is to share this information with others. Now, some of you may already be aware I have started a, a new second YouTube channel and it's called Wood Carving Weekly, where each week I sort of bring you the news of what's been happening in the whittling and wood carving world feature a lot of different videos from a lot of other creators. We do some carver profiles on different individuals. 
We talk about tools, of course, and share information with you and stories about how carvers got their start and where their path has taken them. I hope you'll check it out. It's right here on YouTube. It's called Wood Carving Weekly. And I would certainly appreciate if you would, while you're there, subscribe to that channel. It's, it's a growing channel. It's relatively new. I've had a lot of positive feedback from uh, other carvers and especially those folks that we kind of mentioned in each of the episodes. And I think you'll enjoy it. It's um, designed to be informative, share information with you. Each one, each segment is probably between 10 and 15 minutes long. And packed full of information for you. Okay, let's talk about finishing. So what I did with these little ninja bread men, and very often I will oil a piece before I paint it. You know, I use some walnut oil, let it cure, and then after it's cured, I'll go ahead and paint. I did not do that with these carvings. Reason being, uh, you know, the walnut oil definitely raises the grain. And if that's the look that you would like, by all means, you know, you can oil your piece. You can finish your piece however you want. I wanted to go for more of a cookie look. I didn't want it to be plastic looking, but I did, did want this kind of look. So I did not oil. I did um, get the wood damp a little bit, and then I applied some brown paint. This is the paint that I use. It's from Craft Smart, and you can see the fancy name is brown. <laughs> uh, so this is just acrylic craft paint. I'm sure you can use whatever brown paint you think looks like gingerbread. Uh, this worked pretty well for me. I did water it down some, right, uh, in order to get this kind of effect. Now, what you see for the icing is the natural color of basswood. That is just unpainted basswood. And then for the belts, of course, and the headband and such, you know, take your pick of your different colors. Make several. Have fun and enjoy. Well, folks, I want to thank you for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Happy holidays to everybody, and we'll see you next time.